More professors at Berkeley are being fired or are facing investigations after allegations of sexual misconduct have been found to be credible by a group of people investigating them. Now, the University of California, Berkeley, released new records that revealed that 12 staff members violated the school's sexual misconduct policy over the past five years, bringing the number of employees involved in such cases over that time period to 19. Now, I'm going to give you specific examples of the misconduct uh, that was done. But before I get to all of that, there's a little bit of controversy involving the people who are facing punishments and those who aren't. It seems as though all the people facing any punishments are staff members or faculty members that do not have tenured jobs. Those with tenured jobs might face similar accusations, but the investigations into their misconduct um, aren't as thorough. And if they do find some wrongdoing, it seems like they don't get fired as easily as these non-tenured uh, staff members do. I thought you said we're going to say the controversy surrounds the name of the assistant men's basketball coach who's in trouble. His name is Jan Hufnagel. Okay, we'll get we'll get to him in a minute. Okay, okay all right, let's see what Hufnagel is. He's did. a bad boy. Well, and I'll tell you why. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, now not in a good way. Like sometimes there's good bad boys. He's a bad bad boy. That sounds even better. Okay, no, that's not right. That's not right. Let's give you the story. <laughs> all right, so three faculty members were previously named, including Sujit Chowdhury who resigned as Berkeley Law School Dean last month, and astronomy professor uh, Joff Marcy? Jeff. Jeff, okay, Jeff Marcy, uh, who resigned last October. Marcy left in the wake of sexual harassment allegations from several former students. Chowdhury admitted to touching his executive assistant in a way officials said violated the school's policy around unwelcome sexual conduct. So he didn't do it with a student, he did it with his executive assistant. That doesn't make it good. Yeah, so okay. in some, look, there, there are 19 cases in this, in this story. So right. in some of the cases, it involved other staff members um, or other employees at the university. In other cases, it involved students. Like Huffnagel uh, touched uh, or had an issue with a female reporter that's unaffiliated with the school. Exactly. So not a student either. Yes. yes, so a spreadsheet provided by the University of All Reported Sexual Misconduct Cases showed seven involved victims who were students or former students at Berkeley at the time, while uh, the other remaining 10 cases involved other staff members or someone not affiliated with the school. That was the reporter, okay? So uh, let's get to the details of what they did because some of them are outrageous. So graphic number 20A, Howard D. Abrera, an adjunct faculty member who eventually resigned, repeatedly sent sexually harassing emails to an undergraduate student. In one, he invited the student on a dirt smoke filled weekend of unadulterated guilty pleasure and sins and offered to whisper sweet nothings in your ear, the email said. He said, let us whisper of a dream. Gross. Uh, I should get to know you and explore the daring, redacted, dark side of you bring me a shirt from your wardrobe not uh, creepy at all not creepy at all no no listen all that stuff's fine if a you're not her professor and b she's into it right yeah. then you want to have fun about you're going to sniff her shirt and you're going to explore dark sides and everybody's having fun right but don't write that stuff if you're not sure she's into you <laughs> Especially if she's your student. You right? know what's in, what's incredible to me is a lot of people got caught because of emails, right? Um, what are you that stupid? Like, who writes an email yeah, you're where you're professor. sexually harassing someone? You're a professor and you're writing an email to your student who has not shown an interest in you. I mean, because sometimes it happens, right? In a mm -hmm. college, everybody's an adult. It shouldn't happen because it's you've got a different power dynamic there, right? But but affairs happen, right? But in this case. Nobody's showing any interest, and he's like, "Oh, let me see your shirt. Let me sniff your shirt. Oh, I want to, I want to, want to roll you around in the dirt." <laughs> like, you're like, "Okay, dude. Okay." And don't write that down. It's going to be super easy to get rid of you afterwards. And that's exactly what happened. Right. Now, Blake Wentworth, a faculty member in the Department of South and Southeast Asian Studies, whose case is still pending, allegedly told a graduate student, "I could lose my job over this." Well, you did but I'm so attracted to you. At one point, he allegedly came up behind the female oh. student and cupped his hand over her ear. I mean, I, I, I guess I had to be there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, don't come up behind a student and touch her before you have any type of consent, obviously. Um, anyway, all right. Yeah, no, I mean, look, it's, cupping the ear sounds weird. It doesn't sound yeah. like, it was, it's not like cupping other things, right? right? But it's still not cool, you can't do that, right? Yeah. But the way you read the sentence, he came up, you said, he came 
up uh, to her. And I was like, oh, geez, Lord mercy. <laughs> okay. All right, there's more. The reports further revealed that Alan Wong, a fired university oh, no. massage therapist, sexually assaulted a female undergraduate student repeatedly uh, by touching her underwear and genitals during a massage, including after she said, can you focus on my shoulder? Yeah, the, the sad truth of, of this seems to be that guys, grown men, even mm -hmm. smart professors at Berkeley, et cetera, right, can't take a hint. Mm -hmm. Like, so in that case, the massage therapist, she's like, can you focus on my shoulder? That's so clear. Yeah. That's like, hey, don't don't touch other things, right? And meanwhile, he's trying to get into her underwear. Duh, oh, come on, clown, don't do that. That's serious. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I don't, everyone reacts in different ways. I feel like some women would be so shocked at what's happening that they'd feel like they're trapped and they can't leave. I feel like I'd punch him in the face. Like, if he started fondling me, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. he's he's lucky that she didn't react in a violent way. Yeah, so um, you've got to be careful, especially given the power dynamic, right? So if you, somebody might think their grade is on the line and they, they that I remember when I was a student, I was a super dork mm -hmm. and I thought my whole life was on the line. All of this is going on my permanent record, right? And then, you know, and a lot of these kids are at Berkeley are super smart and care about getting great grades and stuff. So you have to be super careful about that dynamic. Look, I, I know a story that happened at Berkeley that's actually going to be super hot uh, between a female professor and a female graduate student, okay? Mm -hmm. And it was totally consensual and wonderful, okay? <laughs> but that was consensual. Yeah. She was a graduate student. Even so, there are significant issues there and you have to tread carefully. Mm -hmm. As it turned out, they tread very carefully. Okay. <laughs> but in this case, these are all unwanted and it's super creepy. And if you're like bothered by like, well, how am I supposed to know? Well, yeah, you're supposed to know. You're not, you can't just go bungling in and grabbing women or telling them that you want to sniff their different piece of clothing, especially if you're teaching them. Come on. This is not, come on, give me a break. Right. This is obvious. But I think that it's important to do these investigations and bring these, you know, issues to light because every time we do a story of someone alleging sexual harassment or sexual assault on a college campus, the overwhelming response is, oh, no, you know, the girl's lying. She's lying. 